Hello lovely people! So today we are talking about how to read scientific papers. You know I mentioned in my last video that scientific papers is the way that science is advanced because it's the medium that scientists use to communicate their work with other scientists. And I've just recently come across a technique that is helping me so much in the way that I read scientific papers. So that's what I'm talking about today. So the method that I'm going to explain to you today is not necessarily the be all and end all. It's not the only way and it's not necessarily maybe the best way to read a scientific paper. And lots of people like to read papers in very different ways. Um, so it's dependent on you personally, but also it depends on where you are within your research. But regardless, there are two very important things to remember when you are reading a scientific paper. The first is that you need to retain the important bits of information. So you need to install all that important information somewhere in your brain. And the second is that you have to think critically about the paper. So don't necessarily take it on its face value. Think about it, go a bit deeper. And for me personally, the retaining the information bit is very difficult for me because my brain is like a sieve. If I read a book today and I read it again in a year's time, I will have forgotten most of it. So I've actually been taking kind of summary notes as I go along throughout reading the paper and I'll show you how I do that and how it's really been helping me. So first up, and I think this is what most people do, I read the title and the abstract first. And I like to read the abstract because it gives me a quick overall view of what the paper is going to be about and it helps me to decide if the paper is going to be relevant to me if I actually want to read the paper. I will then read it through from A to Z. I like reading it in order from introduction to methods to results to discussion and a lot of people don't like doing this they prefer to jump around but for me it follows the most logical flow and i like to do it that way but you can do it whatever way you want and so i will start off with the introduction and i will read the introduction again this is the detail that you go into is dependent on how much reading you've done so if you've done quite a bit of reading in this area and there are certain sections you know and it's just being repeated from what you've read before you can skim through that briefly but if you haven't read this area of research before really go into it with some fine detail and also notice the references because the more you read you'll notice that some references keep getting mentioned again and again and again and this helps you to pick up the groundbreaking or the most important papers within this area that you are reading about so once i've gone through the introduction i will write one sentence that is the overarching theme of the paper. So it's got no detail in, but what is the big, big question that the authors are trying to answer? And once I've done that, I will write three to five summary sentences of the introduction. And this really helps me to just, you know, provide some concrete basis in my brain about what has come before in this area, uh, what is missing and what the authors are trying to do. So after I've written these summary sentences, I will break up my page into a number of columns and this is dependent on the number of aims that the authors have. So if the authors are trying to answer three questions, I will then break up my page into three columns and within each column, write the question that the authors were trying to answer. Next up is the methods and materials section. And for me, this is a love-hate section. So it is often the most difficult to understand because it's the most technical, but it is arguably the most important section in a paper because if your methods aren't sound and up to scratch, the rest of your paper is not really going to mean much. So regardless of how much reading I have done in the specific research area, I will spend quite a lot of time going through the methods and materials and making sure I understand everything. If the authors ran an experiment, I will try to understand the experimental setup. I will try to understand how they collected data. And always I will try to understand how they analyze their data. Because yes, inevitably you'll come across the same analyses again and again and again. But most of the time authors will just change one or two small things or they might do something a little bit differently and you could pick up something that could be helpful to you or make you think of things in a little bit of a different way. And once I've done that, under each of my columns where I've written the aims of the authors, I will write down the methods just briefly. I will write down the methods that the authors are using to answer those questions. On to the results section and now a lot of people again will spend quite a lot of time here they will look through it in quite a lot of detail I don't necessarily do it this way you know results are obviously important 
but I feel that the exact numbers, the fine, fine scale details are not really that important. I'm never going to remember it. So I kind of just skim through this very briefly. Obviously, I will look through the graphs and the tables, make sure I understand the results that the authors are reporting. And then in each of my columns where I have my aims, etc., I will write down the main results that the authors have found. So again, I'm not writing down detailed numbers, but I'm just fitting all the pieces of the puzzle together before I move on. Finally, we're on the home stretch. We're almost at the end. We've made it to the discussion. And I'm going to be perfectly honest here and say that this is quite variable for me. So if the authors are going on this long winded tangent and they just go on and on and on and on, oftentimes I'll just skim through it and I won't really read it in much detail. But sometimes you get fantastic discussions that are written so well. The authors are to the point. They do a great job of interpreting their results. They do a great job of relating it back to what other people have found. And this then I will read in quite a lot of detail. Sometimes I won't even write down anything on my page here. But if there's an interesting point or if there's something that I hadn't thought of or considered before, then I'll jot this down. And that's it. I've made it through a scientific paper. So I've only been using this technique for about a month or two, but I found it's really been helping me. Yes, it does take a little bit longer because you're writing as you go. But at the end of it, you land up with one A4 piece of paper that's got everything written down on it. It allows me to really visualize what's going on in the paper. And then it allows for this critical thinking process because you can sit there, see what's going on, and you can think to yourself, mm, maybe I would have done that a little bit differently, or wow, what those authors did was really interesting. Maybe I could try something like that. So it allows for the visualization, the internalization of the paper. It allows for critical thinking. And for me, it's just been working really well. That's all I have to say on the matter. I hope this is going to help some of you out there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, you know, you can always leave them down in the comments below. And until next time, I hope you go out, read some scientific papers, expand your knowledge and have a happy day.